had my first DVT whilst in hospital after an operation in 1979. A vascular consultant put me on warfarin for three months. The only advice I was given on discharge was to wear a surgical stocking during sport. I was unaware that it could reoccur. In 2002, I had a massive DVT and spent four days in hospital being treated for cellulitis without seeing a VTE specialist. I was put on warfarin for six months and discharged with no advice. Three months later, I saw a consultant vascular surgeon who said that it was now too late to consider surgery. I am left with three veins permanently blocked, wearing a surgical stocking and on anticoagulation for life. Patients need better vascular and thrombosis treatment and advice. Although new data on the risk of recurrence for certain subgroups of patients has been released, there is still a need to standardise the follow-up patients receive after suffering an initial VTE episode. Further integration between primary and secondary care is needed to ensure complex patients at risk of recurrent VTE are optimally managed. Following a diagnosis of VTE, patients can be managed in different settings, for example, either primary or secondary care. But it is important that patients receive specialist advice to assess their treatment needs. These specialist reviews should take place at either three or six months after the initial VTE episode has taken place. For patients who are at risk of recurrence, healthcare professionals should discuss the risk and benefits of continuing anticoagulation therapy at these meetings, while also taking the patient's preference into account. From a primary care perspective, it's important to ensure that there's better understanding of VTE and the risks that it can present in terms of recurrence. Knowledge within primary care teams can really vary, so it's really important to ensure that improvements are made in education and upskilling. Also, there's a lack of mandated requirements from GP practices to proactively manage and support patients who have suffered a VTE episode. VTE really needs to be seen as a chronic long-term condition, like other cardiovascular conditions. VTE can have a significant psychological impact on patients and nearly 25% of people who have suffered a thrombosis end up suffering with post-traumatic stress disorder. In addition, once patients have suffered an initial VTE episode, many experience anxiety and fear over the possibility of a recurrence. Healthcare professionals should provide honest but reassuring advice about the risks of recurrence while also guiding patients towards practical tools to help manage anxiety, such as mindfulness and relaxation strategies, many of which can be accessed online. In my own experience with NHS thrombosis care, I've seen both sides. My care over the last few years has been amazing but it had a really rocky start. I went to hospital with a suspected clot in my leg, but the clinicians I saw initially didn't take the thrombosis risk seriously. They didn't have the knowledge to diagnose me or to refer me on to somebody who could. I was given a lot of misinformation, almost accidentally discharged and not referred to the right team. Fortunately, I was rescued. And like so many thousands of others, I've been put onto an expertly managed programme. And I genuinely believe it saved my life. We must do everything we can to ensure that excellent thrombosis care is spread everywhere throughout the NHS. And that means pushing for the right care if you're not getting it. It means doctors following up after a thrombosis has occurred, continually managing risks and working to prevent these life-threatening incidents from ever happening again.